Hello, 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 everybody. How are you? Happy Sunday, February 7th. We've got one more week to Valentine's Day. So today we're going to be looking at some Valentine's things. So we got a little bit of snow. So some of you did also. Aww. Uh, well, let me see all who is here. We've got Susan, Kathy Klein. Hello, sweetheart. Ooh, it is cold there. Okay, Linda McCollum is here. Oh, and Susan Smith. There was a funny thing. Um, I think of my Thursdays as a separate live stream. And Miss Linda, let me get some lotion. My hands feel dry. Hold on just a second. But um, I needed a little bit of help with the moderation. So I, I'm um, Linda volunteered. So I guess it, it holds over to here too. So um, Susan is the head Sunday moderator. But Susan, if Linda can do anything to help you, if Linda feels up to doing it, this day too she might say thursday's enough for me okay but anyway if, if this is good so good to see you but i just wanted to tell you susan that's why all of a sudden you see linda her name lit up and uh, i really appreciate the help so let's see all who oops what what was oh <laughs> I forget that even when I sign on, it gives me a warning. Be careful what you write down. Everybody can see it. But, yeah, I know that. <laughs> so, let's see. So, Kathy Klein is here. And Susan, Nikki, hello, sweetheart. And Bonnie, hi, sweetie. We've missed you. There is Bonnie. Oh, this is great. I love seeing all of your names. This is great. Laura Rylander. Hi, Laura. Laura, I hope you, if you wanted to, you got signed in as a part of our group, Sio, because we love seeing you every, uh, every uh, live stream that we do. There's Diane57. Okay, she's still a moderator. I didn't know if having Linda was going to bump Diane57 off, but anyway. Uh, Y'all are so cute. So anyway, okay. Well, let's start out. I wrote up my agenda last night, and then I didn't get to sleep till 4 a.m. So I'm trying to go, what did I write? <laughs> so, okay, just kind of reminding myself what I had planned on talking about today. So um, I want to just see something. I want to see... Ooh, that does come up good. Okay. Now, the reason I showed you that is I have an idea. I have an idea. I spent uh, the past several days looking into the OSB software system to do, um, because... I don't, I wanted to try to upgrade my whole thing. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Um, to, I wanted to upgrade my whole process on here because I care so much about y'all. And I want to be, do the best that I can for y'all. And so I spent several days watching all these YouTube how-tos for, because I would rather have bamboo shoots shoved up my fingernails than learn software. I want to paint and sew and create. I don't want to do logical things, you know? And I'm not very precise, so... Hello, Miss Cheryl. Jody's here, too. Hello, Pat. There's Pat. I, go, Pat, I am so... I, I have been 
really feeling this, this connection with Pat lately. And I love it. And I, Pat, I was so tickled the other day. You had such a good day. So anyway, this is, this is kind of a serious conversation because I need your input. Um, I didn't like it when I had the disconnections when I would turn my computer and camera to show the pictures of yours. And so I, I got a new laptop, which I needed. My connections were all getting loose. And if I move that laptop, boom, I lost y'all. So that does help. But then I thought my son had told me if I try OSB, I can show your photographs in a much more professional looking way. And I've been noticing some of these quilt people on their YouTube channels look really fancy. And most don't. Most just are doing our best like me. But there are some who are really glitzy and have really cool scene changes and, and banners and stuff like this. And I thought, well... Maybe I should upgrade. And just to tell you, February 18th, I think four years ago, is when I started doing this. So I'm thrilled. Or was it three years ago? I get kind of confused. But Bonnie might know if it's three or four years. But I started by doing videos. And it was February. In fact, remember that Miss Nadine made me that for our first year anniversary. I guess it's three years. And uh, so this is our third year anniversary. And so I kind of thought, you know, when I started this, I didn't know where it was going to take me. I just knew that I missed having people to sew with. And I love to teach. And I had been teaching at a local quilt shop, but the classes only had two or three students, and that just was not very fulfilling. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things that I'm not sure it's worth the makeup and curling your hair for just two students. <laughs> just a joke. <laughs> but anyway, um, so that's right. We had been missing Diane 57. So anyway, um. I just thought of doing this and I'd seen other shows and stuff. And I said, I think there's a niche out there for me. I think that my, I wanted to create something that felt like we were sitting together sewing and just chatting about whatever came into mind. And so that's what I started with. And I didn't know, you know, three years ago, people were making money off of YouTube. But I think that's kind of gone by the wayside. And I don't know. I think most people use Patreon or whatever to make money. But I just wanted to tell you, I don't, I, this is not monetized at all. I do it because I love it. In fact, it costs me money to do this. I don't make the money from it. But that's, that's fine. I made that decision a couple of years ago that I wasn't going, I was not going to do Patreon because it's just not my style to ask you to support me. And I've got my retirement and I'm doing fine. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't, I, I come here because I just, I love you and I love doing this. Every time I get off of doing a live stream, I just feel so good. And I feel like this is the best thing I've ever, besides raising my kids and meeting Mark, it's the best thing I've ever done. So anyway, I just kind of, it's just kind of good, especially on the third anniversary to kind of say, what is our, our mission plan? What is our goal? And so I do this because I love it and I love visiting with you and it gives me a platform to be able to, to kind of feed that teacher in me and that little bit of a ham in me. And it also gives me a chance to have a reason to get things done, to get, to get creative, to stretch my comfort zone. And so on all of those, it has been wonderful for me. I've been very pleased at the friends I've met. Hello, Teresa Louise. I've been very happy with the friends I've met. And I feel like I have met some soul sisters in this group. And that 
is wonderful. So the reason for all this self-reflecting is I tried, I tried watching the other night about two in the morning, Mark looks over and I've got my tablet on this arm connected to the back of the bed. And I'm sitting there trying to watch these YouTube videos to tell me how to do OBS. And I hope I didn't say OSB, OBS. And he laughed because he'd been asleep for a couple hours and here I am, you know, watching that. And, but anyway, I spent all day yesterday watching videos, practicing, trying. Mark even got in and helped me bless his soul. And the thing I found, it has some cool things on it, but it's different. It is different than what we've come to be used to. And I've got to tell you, I kind of like my comfort areas, you know? And then if I download the pictures, they're not going to be in folders. And then the problem was a third of them just wouldn't show up. If they're, it's, it's a problem with that, that, that software really is more geared to people who game and put one thing on. Well, I wanted to put 30 of your pictures. Pardon me, 30 of your, when I talk like this and get excited, I must swallow a lot of air because I do hiccups. But anyway, so it won't bring up a third of the pictures. And then I have no control of the order they come up in. They don't stay together as a group. I would have to sit and write something about each of your photos. Nadine is here. Woo! Yay. Oh, man, I've got a picture to show you of her finger. She had a major owie. And being our little sunshine, she didn't let us know just how bad that was. It was a very bad wound. So, yep, yep, Pat and I are finding a whole lot in common. So, anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure OSB is for me. It, it I, I don't, I am just who I am. And I show y'all who I am, warts and all. That's, that's the only way I'm comfortable. And I don't want to get glitzy. And I don't want to do highly edited. And I don't want to do quick flashing things. Unless this, the problem I have is I would have to write a list of all your photos and what you said. I would have to edit each photo to try to see if the OSB will take, the OBS will take it. That's going to be hours and hours of work. And I would rather spend time creating. Nothing's wrong with our group at all. I was talking about, I was trying to learn a brand new software system so I could look more professional. Because, you know, now I reach up and grab the camera and move it. I try to show y'all where I'm sewing, and it's not the best thing. And I thought, ooh, if I did OBS, I could put a second camera in. Well, I watched some other videos where they had a better software system and a couple cameras. She's still having to move the camera around, and the, the desk shakes the camera. And I said, you know, I don't know if I gain enough to be worth all the work it takes. Because to try to download a photo on it, it's not like where I, I, as it is now, I go through your emails, I go through the site, and I pull your photos, and I put them in the folder. And I hate how sometimes it takes me a while to get them big enough, and then I have to shrink them before it'll let me go on to the next photo. So I thought I could avoid all of that. Well, it only put about a half of the photos up. Then of that, a half were at the like pointing sideways. And it, I would try to correct it. It wouldn't hold the, the correction. So I don't want to be sitting there showing y'all pictures and having to correct them all the time. So, oh, Susan, thank you. That's, I guess that's what I was coming to is I love what I do. I really wanted to be fancier for y'all and flashier and up to date with the latest stuff. But you know what? 
if I were planning to become famous and turn this into a money-making venture, that'd be one thing. But this is my chance to sit and chat with friends and talk about what we love doing and sharing our lives. I didn't know where this was going to go when I started, but I love where we are. And if you want the flash and the glitz, there are plenty others out there that are doing a wonderful job. And that works for them. My numbers, my numbers grow, creep up slowly, but I'm not setting the world on fire. And you know what? At this age and with what I want to do with my life, especially after this year's medical crisis, I, I like it right here where I am. And, uh, and I'll try to get a little few things kind of, I'll try not to grab the camera so jerky. And I still want to work out the lighting situation. But you know what? I guess I'm happy with what we're doing. And if you like it, then come visit with us. If you don't like it, as my Nana used to say, if you had a complaint about what she cooked for dinner, there are plenty of fine restaurants all over town. <laughs> I loved her. She was full of piss and vinegar, and it was wonderful. But, you know, if you want to, um, if you want to find new and happening and hip and all, that's out there. And he, me, I am who I am. And so I kind of think, you know, I'll do the best within this. I'll talk to my son and see if there's something I'm not getting with the OBS. But he is amazing. I mean, he can do the most incredible things on computers. But you know what? I'm kind of an old dog. And I'm not sure I want to learn all the new tricks. So anyway, well, that's sorry that took so long. but. I kind of wanted to pour my heart out and kind of see what y'all thought too. And, uh, but I wanted to let you know I did try because I told y'all I was going to do it. I, but I just didn't want it to change the feel of this. So hopefully that makes some sense. Hello, Michelle. So that's why, whoops, let me see. So what I did instead I understand I really was watching with Mark that when I turned my camera to look at your photos, the light from each screen kind of, the light from the screen kind of conflicts with the camera. And Mark was like, well, we can get you some new cameras. I love my camera. I know it's silly to be emotionally attached, but I'm emotionally attached to this camera. So anyway... Oh, thank you, Miss Cheryl. I just, I love y'all to bits and I want to be the best for y'all, but at the same time, but that's why I'm, I'm now checking this. What if I were to put the photos on here? Whoops. Well, I can't hit that. Hide agenda. Okay. Come on. Go on. Go away. Go away. Okay. So I wanted to see if I put them on this little cheap tablet. How would they look? Oh, uh, thank you. Yep, I don't sell you a thing. I don't ask you to send money. And I, I'm not, that's just not me. It's just not me. And there are people who need the income and who put in a lot of hard work. And I don't begrudge them, but it's just not me. So anyway, so whoops. I wanted to see how this looks. Does this look better to you than normally when I turn the camera to face? Ah, so you can see better. That's what I think I'm going to do. It still will take me a little bit longer to make sure I remember who sent what and what story. One of the things, unless I can upload the folders on here, it's kind of nice when I open a folder, I automatically remember who did what. So... Oh, thank you, all of you, sweethearts. Um, oh, my shoulders and wrists should do fine. This little, it's a little $100 thing that I got for Christmas about three years ago. I don't know. So, it, and I put one of these on the back. Love those things. But anyway, so I think, I think this could be our answer. All right. 
Well, I am tickled with that. I woke up this morning to let the dogs out. Now, I got to sleep around 4, 7.30. I had to, you know, tingle. And so I got up to uh, let the dogs out so Mark could sleep in because he was up till after 2, and probably 2.30. And so anyway, I let the dogs out and lo and behold, I hope Polly comes in today because we had a little bit of snow. I was so excited. So in our photos today, I'm going to show you our snow. So I knew I've learned living in North Carolina. Take a picture of it quickly <laughs> because by the time I go back to bed and wake up at 11, it's going to be gone. <laughs> so I got. I would. I was waiting for the dogs to come back in, and I snapped some pictures I have to show you. I'm so excited, and sure enough, by the time I woke up, Mark came by. He said, it's all gone. Glad you took those pictures. So anyway, we had fun. Oh, now that's a great idea. I do have, I do have a little tripod thing to help. Thank you. I, I what? See the stuff I learned from y'all? This is what I want. I don't want highly edited. Da, 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 da. I love the give and take. Y'all have helped me so much while I'm here. Last week, Cheryl Lemon and Susan Smith won my little heart buttons. There was a little problem. I had the math wrong. There are 36 buttons per uh, Valentine's table, what did you call it now, Susan? Table topper, 36. I thought there were 24. So I'm making some new ones real quickly. Then the good news is, oh, Michelle has five inches. Oh, I love it. Thank you, my Cheryl and my Susan. Then Mark said, well, you know, I've got this tiny little drill thing. It's a little hand drill. And it's like I've got a little file in. And it's small enough that I use it to open up, especially after I put the Mod Podge on it. I, I use it to open up the holes so you'll build it more easily so the button's on. So I'm still working on them. Um, and, oh, a uh, Cheryl, um, if you get a chance... Send me an email and make sure I have your most current address because I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I have her new address. I might have her daughter's address. So if you can send me one to my email, that would be great. But anyway, I got your, I got your envelopes and they are stamped and all of that. And then Diana Wright and Marsha, I promise this week I'm going to get your packages mailed out. Lately, I feel like I am burning the candle at both ends, having to get a new computer and switch over files. I still don't have my photo editor, so I'm using one that comes with Microsoft, but I miss my Adobe, but I'm not sure how I'm, I don't want to buy it again, and I don't know where and what I have so far as the thing I bought before. Now, do you see this? And it, the only problem with it is it got really bruised. But that is where I cut myself the other night, Thursday night. And you can't really see it good, but it's a little V. You know, it's, I, I, I clipped the skin like a little notch. And I wrote everybody on our groups IO. Speaking of groups IO, if you'd like to join and you've, I've recognized you on here twice, um, I'd love to invite you, so send me a um, send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com and I'll send you an invitation. We've had a few new members the last couple weeks, and I'm thrilled. So we do a lot of fun things. In fact, before I forget, Susan wants me to remind you that the third Saturday they do a jitsi. Uh, live chat where they um, are working on the farmer's wife quilt. And so it's sit, sit and stitch the third Saturday. So think about it. If you've ever wanted to do the farmer's wife um, blocks, 
then, you know, um, so if you belong to our group, then you are welcome to join. You have to be a member to be able to get into the Jitsi, which is like a Zoom, very easy to do. Even if you're not computer savvy, it's very easy to do. So remember that third Saturday. Now, let me see. The third Saturday of this month would be February 20th. Okay, third Saturday, February 20th. All right. Now, oh, you get to pick what you want to want to stitch on. Thank you, Miss Body. Body and Susan are great with the Jitsi. They are very, very good. All right. So anyway, as I was saying, I cut my finger Thursday night when I was doing my landscape stuff. And, uh, oh, yeah. W yes, we have. Yeah, we're definitely over 2,000, and I'm just tickled. We have come a long way, and we've got a very loyal group, and I love y'all to bits. And so I cut my finger, and I was talking about it in our group on um, a post that I put. And rightly, some people said, Deb, you need to stop doing this, because a couple weeks before that, I cut the end of this. And it's with... It's this particular pair that's gotten me both times. I love it. This was, I got off Tooltron, and I love it because it's so, so easy to use. It's just like the series Fiskers puts out, and but I keep them sharp. I have a little sharpener here, and I sharpen them all the time. Well, I get in a hurry, or I just lose my attention span. Nadine will tell you how awful that is. And so um, she did a much worse. When you see the, oh, when you see the picture of hers, you're just going to cringe. And um, she's a brave girl. And so anyway, to make a long story short, I went, they, I, several said, Deb, you need to get yourself some protective gloves. Well, I'm not a glove wearer. I don't even wear gloves when I go out and garden. But I thought about it. And I thought about it. And you know what? I went on Amazon, and I'm not ready to put an order in right now. I just put in an order just um, a couple days ago. But I put some gloves on there, and I got some that, are, that aren't so bulky. And they are made for people who shuck, shuck oysters or um, cut vegetables. And so when I get them in, when I get them in, I'm um, going to send some to my dear Nadine. And because mainly, I only need right hands. She needs left hands. We make a wonderful pair. <laughs> so when I, it might be a couple weeks before I put in an order, and then it'll take me a while to, um, it'll take me a while to get them in. But then I'm going to send them to her. So anyway. Yes, we need to we need to take care of ourselves. So anyway, hello, Miss Marsha. We don't care if you're late around here. We're just glad to see you. All right. So I'm going to be showing you about my vi uh, violin Valentine, and I wanted to show you. I'm wearing. I should have put this up higher. How are you supposed to see it? This I made a couple years ago. And this is a very easy thing to do. Hold on. You just take little, I just made a little heart and I stuffed it and I put on a pen back. And then before I stuffed it and made it when I just was working on the front, I put all kinds of sweet little things on it and yarns and, and this is just, it's just a little piece of fun. And uh, I read something the other day that brooches are out of style. You know what? If I like it, it's not out of style. It's always Deb style. So let me put this up higher. I was like, who do I wear this? Or do I wear, um, do I put on Miss Bonnie's um, flamingo she sent me? And I said, well, Valentine's Day is coming up. So I wanted to wear a valentine's hello to y'all all right now exactly you know what 
if you live your whole life by other people's rules and standards, then when it comes your final day, who do you have to blame? I always figured that out. I said, I don't really have me to blame. So I don't play that game. So hello, Miss Teresa Jukovic. So, okay. So now we talked about, I told you all about the OBS and the live streams. And I'm not saying I'm not going to switch, but I would need a lot more counsel about it. And I couldn't find that. So um, I am going to show you, when I show you pictures, I'm going to show you Miss Vinalda Utterbach. And oh my gosh, she's so talented. I need to write her back an email too. So, um, I'm very, very excited when I show you pictures. I'm also going to show you um, the site for the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show. I'm going to bring up so you can kind of see how do you do this. If you've never entered an online quilt show, I can kind of show you. It's very simple, very easy. And... Um, and, you know, it gives me a chance. I'm taking only one class, but boy, am I going to enjoy that. This past week, I entered my quilt in the Mid-Atlantic contest, and I had to take these photos and see where it says large section detail back. Well, I kind of wasn't sure what that meant. Later on, afterwards, I went, I think they didn't want the whole back. They wanted you to zoom in a little bit. So since it's only a wall quilt, hopefully they can still see it enough. But I had to take these four photos. And I took about, when I realized that midnight meant midnight Pacific time, I had three more hours. So I took an hour and a half just taking photos and calling them to get the best ones. So anyway, but I just thought I would, this is, Sorry, I kind of spilled water on this, but this is what the form, the information, this is just the information, and it tells you, you know, what the rules are. The nice thing about an online contest is you don't have to mail the quilt. You mail the pictures in, and you have to take really good pictures, and guess what? I have a Sony camera. My cell phone took better pictures than the Sony camera. So if you have a, a, a reasonable cell phone, and mine, mine was a refurbished LG cell phone for $14, and it did pretty good pictures. But it'll, they'll give you the information, and you've got to pick out the category, which was easy. Mine was wall quilt. Now, if they ever ask you, they, they sit in here, what's the width, what's the height, and I gave them that. Then they said, what are what is the square inches of the quilt do not panic all you have to do is take the width times the height i did it on my little calculator and it will then and for mine it was like 31 wide 24 20 20 something um tall and it came out to 700 and something square inches the reason they ask you the square inches because that they have to get pretty precise to make sure you're in the right category. The wall quilt had to be less than 1900 square inches, but greater than or equal to 576. And mine being 775 fit right in that. But then other size quilts have different size and they come in square inches. So, uh, you see. So anyway, but don't be panicked. Just get your little calculator out and do the height times the width, and there you go. The reason the square inches is, is important because some quilts, especially art quilts, are irregular shaped. So they're just trying to make sure that there's enough square inches to fit in that category. Okay. Yes. Oh, what kind of dog is Augie? Who has a new dog? Diane 57. Oh, yeah, make sure you send us photos. That's another thing. Ladies, thank you so much for sharing pictures of your work. 
it is my favorite time of the live stream. And I think a lot of you feel the same way. Thank you for taking time to show pictures of your work and to tell us about you and your life. Some of the stories behind the art is really beautiful and makes it so special. So thank you for doing that. And um, I was just thinking of something. I really need to get to bed a little earlier the night before live streams. Oh, and thank you for we had a, a, a wonderful Friday live stream. Uh, we threw it in there because my Thursday live stream was a mess. <laughs> so anyway, all right, let's get to this Valentine's thing. Then I will, I want to show you photos and then take you to the Mancuso site to show you um, and Miss Vinalda's um, art site and show you her work too. So let's look at this and then we're going to spend some time looking at sites. All right, this is what I have been working on and let me show you what I've got. You know how I, I tease and tell y'all I'm cheap, but I really am. I had to cut out some little pieces of fusible to put on the bottom of these hearts so that I can then fuse them in place before I stitch them around the edge, okay? So I cut out these little odd shapes because I only want the bottom half since the top half, not, well, a little less than a half, is going to hang over the edge and give it a pretty scallop shape. I couldn't bring myself to throw these scraps away because if I get something that needs a little tacking down, I can still pull it off of these scraps and use it. So when I tell you that I'm cheap, I am cheap. <laughs> well, I'll put them out of the way so y'all won't be thinking too much about that. But anyway, um, Oh, gosh. Let me tell you. I started sewing on the little heart-shaped buttons. And then I realized, oh, no, I haven't done the buttonhole stitch around these little heart shapes. Well, it's better to put the buttonhole stitch around them before you sew on the buttons. And... Because, you know, then you can't, like, every time I tried to get around this button, it was a little close. And so then it would get hung up, okay? It was a little close, and it would get hung up. So I don't want to do these by hand. So I said, oh, I've got to quickly. I sat down this morning about noon, and I said, I've got to stitch around all these little hearts. Well, I found... And I didn't bother to put any stabilizer behind this because I thought it's linen. It's heavy. Well, then I forgot something. And what I forgot was, and I should have remembered this back when I worked for the museum and had to make clothing out of linen. Linen is a coarser fabric than we're used to. It's not fine like our cottons. And let me see, if, can you see how coarse this is? It's more slubby, which means that the individual threads that weave the fabric are more irregular. They're not smooth and fine like cotton. And it's a coarser, coarser more open weave. That's one of the reasons that we stopped wearing linen suits because they don't hold to press. The moment you sit down in them, they've got wrinkles in them. And that's due to the coarser thread and the coarser weave. And so that's just part of the nature of linen. So when I started working on doing the buttonhole stitch around there, what did it do? It started pulling the thread and needle were pulling some of the linen threads down into the machine. So what should I have done first? I came back and did it. I put some fusible interfacing on the back of this. And now when I go to stitch, that'll give it some body. 
and I'll get a prettier stitch and I it won't look so, you know, like I fought over it. So anyway, so I'm going to bring you back over here now and tell you. But don't forget, if you're going to do any stitches on top of something like this with the machine, put your fusible interfacing on the back first. And you can see here's the edge of it. I didn't bring, I didn't make it a perfect circle because it only, the, the bolt I have, it's only like 21 inches wide and this is 26. I'm not going to worry about that. And that's just where the hearts are going to go. And that's going to be easy. All right. So all of this is fused down, but I've got to come back. Now, if I were Miss Cheryl Lemon, I'd probably do the buttonhole stitch by hand, but I'm not. And I'm not as good as she is amazing at it. But that, you know, takes all kinds. That's what the world is about. So now let me see. If I bring this light up. Whoops. I thought for sure. Oh, I plugged in the wrong thing. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I need that plugged in. Okay. I won't get that light done. All right. So what I want to show you is what I have besides, in fact, I had to move this and see how that shows right there. Okay, let me show you this. I had to move this one, pull it up and move it. And so it's a little frayed. I'm going to have to neaten it up a little bit. And then I've got some of this residue. Well, I'll either get a little brush and brush that off or I'll take and put a cloth over it and iron over it and try to get that to stick to the cloth. Okay. No, I'm going to leave the interfacing on. And that'll just make it nice to lay on. But you know what I might? I'm, I, I'll have to make sure it's really well fused down. I'm going to just try to leave it on. This is going to be something I sit on the table for two weeks every year. So, you know, it doesn't have to be really amazing. Okay. So I will be soon, when you see me doing much cutting, I will, in a few weeks, have my protective glove on. But anyway, I like the gloves I found because they're going to be more comfortable. Because I like to be able to feel what I'm doing, except not the cut. <laughs> All right. This light, every time I turn that light on, it gets really, it, it makes the camera get dark. And I need to figure out how to do that. All right. So I took... What I did is I took floss and let me grab my materials bag. I took floss and I took three colors of green and I separated them. I, I used three colors. I did two strands of each color. And this is what it comes out looking like. And why did I do that? I just wanted to. And I think she had a variegated type thread for hers. This is supposed to be a stem, a kind of a delicate stem. So I wanted something a little fuller than just using two pieces, two ply or three ply. So I just took and wound this around my finger. This is ready to use when I need to start a new, a new one. But I just wound it around my fingers and then did this so it doesn't tangle. All right. Then I did the same thing with my pink threads. I did pink and red to give it for, the, for these French knots right here to give it a nice look. All right. This right here is a chain stitch. Then these are French knots. And I do, I did a blanket stitch on the machine for the hearts. I'm not going to, I will show you how to do each of those stitches, but I'm not going to actually really do them by hand. But with a blanket stitch, I come up. Oh boy, it's a little, oh, you know what? I got a very unsharp needle. You come up behind, I come up in this fabric. 
Okay. And then I'm just, whoops, let me try that again. I didn't put a knot on it. This is a single, a single ply that I use to sew on the buttons. Okay. All right. So I, to do the blanket stitch, I come up like this through the, about, you decide how far from the edge of the heart you want your blanket stitch to come in. And I'm coming in less than an eight. Then I'm going to do this stitch in place. It's just one whole stitch in place. Then what I'm going to do is put it back in there, but come over to here beside it and then grab the loop. Okay. And now that I've got that started, then it's just a matter of moving over, grabbing the loop, coming down, back in that same space, moving over, coming up, grab the loop, and you just make, make sure that you pull it snug near the edge of the fabric. Okay. So that is what you do if you want to do a blanket stitch. Now, believe it or not, I looked up these stitches because I've been doing them for years, but I'm hand taught, I self taught, pardon me, I'm self taught. So sometimes I learn things in the wrong way. So I wanted to make sure I was going to teach you correctly the chain stitch. So I just put a stitch and I, I move mine just a thread away, thread apart. You come up from behind then go back in one thread over. Then you go about an eighth of an inch forward, okay? And then you pull slowly because you're gonna grab a loop, okay? Make sure it's not twisted, you grab the loop. And then you slowly pull it down like this. Well, the way I taught myself is I would then take a stitch right here in front of it, anchoring that down. That's not correct. What you do is you go back in right where you came up, advance it forward like this. And I'm thinking, well, what holds that down? Well, you know what holds that down? Your next loop holds that down. And it gives it a softer, fluffier look than what I used to do. So let me show you that again. You go right back the hole that you came up with before you grab the loop. You go right that, back down beside that hole. You come out an eighth of an inch. You pull it slowly so you can grab the loop. And then you go down. Now, when you want to finish off your last stitch, that's when you go down in front of that loop. You go down in front of the loop, come through, and then you knot off, okay? So that is your chain stitch. You can pull, you can have it closer together if you pull it tighter, okay? So now let me cut this loose and I'll show you. I told you I was awful at French knots. So I looked up a video on French knots. Don't you just love the internet? So I'm going to do a knot in this thread. And then here is where I did my other French knot. So I'm going to put another one beside it for now just to have some place to demonstrate. I come up from the bottom. Now you know what I'm going to do too? I found that making the French knots was so much easier if I put my hoop down. I put my hoop down like this. Put the top on it. I didn't do this when I did the chain stitch, chain stitch for the edge because I like, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could advance my needle as easily, but okay. So now it's in the hoop for the French knot. 
So I come up where I want the French knot to be, okay? Whoops, let me make sure you'll be able to see this. I come up right here where I want the French knot to be. I pull it all the way through, okay? Pull it all the way through. Then I wrap it twice. Now I used to wrap it three times. You only wrap it twice and you keep the finger on the rest, the, the bulk of the thread. Then you take and you go right in. I go one thread stitch away. See, it's really close. See, that's where the thread is. I go one stitch away and go down. Now, so maybe I'm supposed to go in the same hole, but I didn't like that idea. So then you hold this firm. That's the difference I found. You hold this firm and you pull the thread through, holding it till it's right at the end. And there you go. That is a very nice French knot. I'm going to do that one more time to show you. Whoops. Let me make sure I'm in the right place here. Now, this is more French knots than I needed to do, but I can take them out easily later. So I'm coming up right here. There's my needle. Come up like this. See, this is why I like it on the hoop, because I need both hands to do the knot. I take and wrap it twice, and then hold this thread firmly. Whoops. Hold this thread firmly. Then hold it and pull it down. Now put my finger on the top, and there you go. You know what? I was supposed to go down. I was, hold on, I was supposed to do this. Okay, I'm going to do that again. I forgot to go back in the fabric. All right. Whoops. I've come up right here. Okay. Your video is lost? Uh-oh. Can y'all still see me? Somebody let me know if you can still see me. Okay, so here it is. You wrap it twice. You go down in the fabric. You go down. Okay, good, Laura. Thank you, hon. So now you ho you're holding this firmly, and you pull the thread through and then put your finger on top for the last little bit and there are your french knots and i assume if you want a larger french knot you would do another wrap okay so i'm hoping that that quick little lesson kind of shows you the three stitches that you need to do this let me come back out of close up and i hope you could see that easily and uh, there we go. But one nice thing about the OBS, if I were able to use it, is I wanted to drop a camera down to make it more easy for you to see what I'm doing on the sewing machine. But because you can get those little um, a camera similar to a Go GoPro pretty cheaply. So anyway, there we go. That's it. I think it's really cute. And it's going to have alternating pink and red stars all over, I mean, hearts all around the edges. And I showed you how I made these. Let me show you this again. These were pretty easy. And thank you to Cheryl. I wondered what I did wrong um, because my hearts didn't match up. I cut the same heart pattern. And then when I went to turn the front to the back, it didn't match. And she rightly told me it's not a mirror image. It's slightly off. So that made me feel like I wasn't a complete doofus. And I appreciate that. that I didn't even realize. So anyway, with these, now this is going to be a pink heart. The pink is the background with no fusible on it. The front has fusible. And that way, when I press it and get ready to stitch it, let me do that real quick. I'm going to press it. And then I'll show you 
Oh boy, I don't know if I have my thread in place. I I have made all of my red hearts. They're already made. And what I did to kind of make it look a little more fun and to give them a little bit more presence is I put a little piece of batting in the middle to give them a little heft. Okay, let me, I am pressing these hearts. All right. So now that I've pressed this, then I'm going to come over. Whoops, my glasses are falling off. All right. These need the pink. Okay. This one, oh, uh, sorry about that. My. My new little pup doesn't quite know the rules that you're quiet when mom's doing a live stream. Yeah, I had gray thread on. I don't want gray thread. Ah, today's snack, cherries. Those are the last of the cherries. Remember I told you they were so expensive. Oh, no. Oh. Until I can get them on sale, that's the last of the cherries. Okay, I made them last this time, just a few at a time. Okay, now, all right, I've threaded my machine. I'm ready to go. I've already got pink thread in the bobbin. All right, now you see how the hearts are off. I will trim that up later. This is the right side. It has the fusible on it. So I put it under my needle, and I have a zigzag foot on there. I've got the right stitch, which is, I've got the right stitch, which is the blanket stitch. And here, whoops, whoops, got to take my slipper off. I can't feel the foot pedal. Okay. So I just make sure, I try to make sure it lines up with the outside of the the pretty part. Let me see if I can get this in a little bit more. Okay. I don't worry if, if the bottom of the heart sticks out a little bit. I go by the top material. That's what's going to show. The bottom material is going to be trimmed off and it's going to be on the back. So, and I wanted to do this with matching threads. A lot of times on blanket stitching, they'll use like a black thread or a dark thread so it really shows. But on these, I just want it to match. I've got a picture to show you where Cheryl Lemon had done hers and they were all just beautiful. But Cheryl, I will be, I have your package of buttons ready to mail out. I've just got to get them in the mail. I want to make sure that the envelope I put them in is going to work for me. But then what I do is I'll come in here and trim off where the, they don't quite meet up right. So what, I, if I had known now, I would then turn it, turn the pattern over to get a better match before I traced it out. But, whoops. Sinking in the, sinking into the west. Okay. All right. So there we go. We've got the blanket stitch on. Then I'm going to come over here. Pop this out of the frame. And I will have this, I will finish this during the week and show you the finished product next weekend. Also, I wanted to show you, I always use the little eyeglass chains that I get from the dollar store and Dollar Tree, I guess they call it. And I have one that has little clear beads. They're, they're kind of an opalescent bead. 
and I might take some of those beads and sew them on the flowers. I'm trying to decide. All right. Now, I take a piece of the fusible, and I'm going to fuse it on the back of this. And the main reason I'm fusing this is so that it will be able to be ironed down so that then I can stitch it down. Okay. Did it all come up? Oh, I peeled it off too soon. Let me try it again. If you peel it off before it cools, it will stay with the paper. So let it cool. What I'll do is peel off an already cooled red one. All right, I'm going to let that cool. I'm going to go ahead and put the red one on here because I'm alternating them red, pink, red, pink. Okay. And then I put the iron down here. And it's that simple. I had already taken this linen and I had hem stitched, you know, the edge down. And then this on the top, that's the finished. If you wanted to, you could put a lining on it. But I'm not going to because it's, it's a decoration. All right, let's see now if I can peel this off. Yep, it's stuck this time. You can always tell because if it's stuck, the paper's real slick and smooth. If it didn't, it's still a little nubby. All right. So, and you put place these so that when you place the next one, you, there won't be a gap where you can see the table topper through it. And then I put this down. Press. I want to make sure that the heat really gets on the fusible. And uh, all, it's always good to do this. Take and press it from the other side to make sure that you've really got the fusible reaction. Now, be sure that you don't overfuse. You can overfuse, which means you iron so much that it, all the fusible soaks into the fabric, the main fabric, the base fabric. And there's no fusible left anymore on this, and it'll just fall right off. So fuse it, but don't overfuse it. So here, is this a sweet edge or what? And I will go along and stitch everywhere it touch, like across here where it touches the linen. Cross, and I'll have to do pink, red. I'll have to change thread colors, but that's okay. This is worth it. All right. So, let me put everything together. And I am a real big believer in either using, using my boards or a big old Ziploc baggie and keeping everything in one place. Because if I don't, I will lose something. And this way... I pick this up and I'm ready to go. Okay. So I love that. And I will show you the finished product next week. All right. Hello. And I said that I would show you the finished product because I want to make sure I do finish it. <laughs> you know, Deb. Okay. I wanted to show you our Thursday night. Art quilts are working along pretty good. Oh, there you go. Love giant Ziploc bags. And when I go like... I want to show, I use those Tyvek, not Tyvek. Tarp material bags that you can get from Ikea. And all my projects go in a giant Ziploc bag. That way... I don't lose anything. 
All right, so here is, we're doing a Thursday night art quilt, and it's coming along. In fact, this week, I started adding the tree line. So, it's coming along. Just wanted to show you anybody, any of you that like to do collage landscaping quilts, you are very welcome to join us. Oh, that's, it's pretty good. All right, now I think it's time to show you photos, and then after I show you the photos, and I show you Miss Vinalda's site, then after I show you the photos, I will talk to you about how do you take a class online from one of these quilt shows? Because I think a class from the Mancuso companies, the big Mid-Atlantic quilt show. You, Everybody's heard of the Mid-Atlantic quilt show. So, okay. Now, this is the new way of trying this for now. It's new to me. <laughs> so I'm going to come in here and pull up my photos. I need to put my slipper back on. My foot was getting cold. Woo! Okay. But how is everything doing? Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, photos, come on. Now, I saw them on here a little while ago. I guess I have to go down to P for photos. Makes sense. All right. These are going to be in different order because I didn't know if it was going to work. And so I didn't know if it was going to work. So I'm just going to show you the best way I can. And I'll work on refining it for next time, okay? I'm just excited that it shows better. Oh, I'm very excited. Okay. Now, I don't know. This, this might be the first one. This is some, some fabric. No, now don't do this, Timmy. Okay. No. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on just a second. Hmm. Okay. There is bound to be an easier way to get to this. Now, since I know this works, I'll do that next time. All right. Now, I have to be careful because this is a touch screen. So, anytime I touch it, it goes bonkers on me. All right. Let me make sure. Then I've gone back to all the photos. Okay, I think this is it. All right. This is a close-up. Oops. This is... <laughs> this is a close-up of Dolores's... Dolores's quilt. And she said it was okay. Whoops. Okay, now we have a problem. Let me go this way. This is a picture of Dolores's quilt. I'm trying not to get, I don't. Okay. Let me try not to touch anything. All right. This is Del a close up of her quilt. And I'm trying to see, this is where I'm going to have to have, oh, take care, Miss Bonnie. I'm going to have to, ooh, I'm going to have to kind of fix a couple things to have this work right. But she made this quilt when, now why did that do that? I, I did not even have my hand around the corner. Well, come on, stop. Go away. How do you make it go away? <laughs> oh, come on. But anyway, this is Miss... You know what? I've got to learn how to do this first. It's too frustrating. So we're going to go back to our old way for right now and bring up... Because if I get all flustered, it's not going to work. I will work on using the iPad. I promise. So, let's go up here to Miss Alexis's, and I will work on another way. All right. 
I hope my sound is not a little scratchy. I noticed Thursday and Friday the sound was acting up. Now let me move the problem. All right. This is Miss Alexis. She does beautiful, beautiful um, hand embroidery. Nice work, Miss Alexis. No, look at all those French knots she did. So I, she could teach French knots like nobody's business. All right. But next week I will have everything worked out with the tablet. And here is another piece of her fabric that she got for Christmas. I love that she's doing beautiful backgrounds with, with her embroidery now. Hold on one second. Maisie, enough. Pardon me, but Miss Maisie is being rude. Here is another collection she, of her fabric she got for Christmas. Okay. Let's see. Now, let me, whoops, come on. Oh, that was the last one in Miss Alexis's, our Alexis Grand. That was the last photo in her. And Miss B, I've showed you this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, landscape that she did. And I love the fabrics. I love how they look watercolor-like. And then look at all of her hand embroidery. I, I guess some of it's probably machine, some of it's hand. She's working on a new one now, but she said she's not doing grass for a while. She's sick of green. <laughs> so I can't wait to see what she comes out with next. All right. Thank you, Miss B. Now let's go back and see. Aha. We have a new person, Miss Betty. Betty Middleton, and look, she sent me this because I'm getting ready to take a class of how to do a cow with the collage fabric. And what I'm intrigued about, I've only done realistic animals with fabric. This, you take all different colors, kinds, and it's amazing how you know exactly that this is a lion. And But look at these crazy colors and shapes. That, to me, is the fun of an art quilt. So thank you, Miss Betty, for sending this to me. It gives me the inspiration that I need to take this class. So thank you so much, Miss Betty. Love, love, love that. All right. Miss Bonnie. Come on. Waiting for, okay. You know, Miss Bonnie, um, Miss Bonnie did this last week, I mean, a couple weeks ago, where she used a jelly roll and did a quilt called, some call it Jelly Roll Race. And it's a very, very quick quilt for you to put together. So that's nice and bright. And I noticed. These blocks right here are from her LaFleur. They're beautiful. Okay. And this is her first um, finished object of this year. And it's lovely. Way to go for finishing it, Miss Bonnie. That's got to be the best thing. I don't have that happen, to, happen very often to me, but I'm going to learn to let it happen. Okay. Then. Cheryl Lemon. Okay, I'm going to start with her wonderful pen cushions. And I love the bee charm on that, the flower, the butterfly. Very talented lady. I love it. I love, too, that her work is so nice and tidy and neat. And look at this, like a baby boot and, and these beautiful flowers in a pot. I almost think they look like cupcakes. Then here are her beautiful uniform stars. I mean, hearts that she did for her Valentine's quilt. I just, I think she did a great job. 
I told her when I grow up, that's how I want all my sewn items to look. Perfect. Nice job. Nice, nice job. Okay. Let's see what else I have from Miss Cheryl. Oops, I'm going to have to turn this. Here we go. Look at this lovely, lovely cross stitch that she got done. In my garden, it says. Just beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Miss Cheryl. Just lovely. Okay, making sure this is down so I can move on now. All right, let's see who else we have. Oh, I'll go ahead and show you a few of mine. Okay, let's see. Oh, got to start off with my best flamingo. I'll show you the pictures, the four pictures I used to enter this into the quilt show. So trying to make sure what I wanted to see when I took these photos. I wanted my edges to be as straight as possible because you all know sometime when you hang a quilt, you know, especially I was hanging this on my design, my rolling design wall, which is not as stiff. It, I was hanging it on to hanging flannel. So you try to get it as straight and square as you can get it and take the photo. And I had worked for about a week trying to add shading and make sharpen up some of my edges, redid a lot of my quilting to make sure it was neat and tidy and not in a hurry. And I even gave the bills a little touch up paint where I'd accidentally nicked them with an iron. So uh, paint doesn't like to be iron. All right, now let's see. Whoops, let me go down the other way. Come on. Okay. Now, then I'll go this way. That's the back. This is what I took a picture of to show them. And I don't think they wanted the whole back, but I'm hoping they can see enough of my work here to get an idea of my quilting. Then I did this close up of the front. They wanted two details of the front and I wanted to make sure to show them the little Degas copy of the painting I made and these three dancers in pink is what I used for the inspiration of how to pose my flamingos so I was kind of excited about that little painting here I did a detail of the feathers and the yarns and the netting I went ahead and added more feathers and I took I took lame and backed it with cotton and did stitching, you know, infused them and then did thread painting for all uh, to show all the little feathery parts of the feather. And I did, I think I had at least three per bird, then did yarns and then did an overall netting, the last step. And I wanted to show them the feet. I did a lot of thread painting to the feet and legs and wanted to show them my quilting too. So that, that was my next close-up. Whoops. Okay. So now I send you the two close-ups and two close-ups. Ah, okay. Pat sent this this week. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. So it was so she sent it to all of us and I just had to I had to take it and show it to y'all. Now I had a problem this morning when I was trying to, I was upstairs on that machine and my Juki, and I was having a problem with the thread getting stuck down in the machine and then a bird's nest being made. Well, guess what I found? I found, I took the cover off of the bobbin area, and I don't know if you can see all of this. But I'm ashamed of myself, and I wanted to show y'all how bad I am. Look at this. Look at this. Now, I am so ashamed. Can you tell? Look, look, look up here under the feed dog. I mean, come on, Deb. Look at that. Isn't that just simply awful? So I took pictures of my, of my shame to share with you, to show you 
that even if you get busy, come on, people, keep your machines clean. Because it's so easy to blame the machine. But you know what? It only took a second for me to realize that's me. That's not the machine. Shame. I mean, I've got lint in places you can't imagine. So, needless to say, she got a thorough clean right then. So, here is what I woke up to this morning when I looked out the door. And you can see it's not much and it's all gone, but it was here. Just for a little bit, it was here. This is out my front door. I love looking at the, this is a silt pond and this is a very small lake and I just love them. That's up the hill looking. And I noticed there were pebbly ice under it. So it's kind of nice it melted now. That's out my backyard. There's a little creek out here. and It always looks so pretty. In the summer, I don't even see neighbors. And I like it that way. <laughs> Here's my back deck. And you can see my little dogs. I had let them out. So they doop, doop, doop their little footprints. But anyway, that is our snow. And that's, I think that's it for Deb. All right. So now let's see where we're going to go. Deborah Dunnell. We're thinking of Deborah Dunnell today. Please keep your hearts and your minds on her. If, you, if you're inclined to pray, I think that would help her too because she's having terrible spinal pain. She just cannot get comfortable. And here's a collage animal of hers. Look at that kitty. And look at all these funny colors. But yet, you know exactly what it is. That is just, it just makes me smile. Here's Deborah sitting at her machine, putting a big old quilt through it. But right now, she's not feeling good enough to do anything. So I'm hoping that she can, has gotten to the doctor and they have decided what to do to help her. I feel so bad for her. But isn't that beautiful work? And I love having the 3D flower petals. That gets me excited. Okay, now let's move on to Dolores. Dolores does quilts for, um, she does quilts on commission. So people who want a, their dog immortalized in fabric and thread, look at her work. It is exquisite. Let me zoom, zoom in to show you some of those thread stitching. I mean, it is amazing. So I am sure she stays pretty busy. That is just absolutely beautiful. Let me shrink it back down and go on. Now this quilt, and I'm trying to remember what she named it. It was something about the meaning of life. She had been given the wrong medicine, which made her go into a deep depression. She gave me permission to tell this story. And I thought it was important because we all... Um, at some point in our life, have certain struggles. And what do we do to get through that? And she said she started this quilt and finished it when she finally was feeling better. She worked through all of her depression with this quilt. And it has, I think this is the one she said won third place in the Hoffman Challenge. I forget what year, but is this just a work of beauty? And I can see that that would be a wonderful thing to do through a rough time of your life. And look up. Oh, let me see if I can bring this pug up a little bit. Oh, he's a he's a he's a wee one. Let me see. But isn't that pug just the cutest? She has got tremendous, tremendous talent. Here's another animal portrait she did. That is just beautiful. So thank you, Miss Dolores. We can't wait to see more. Your work is phenomenal. Now, Miss Diana Wright, I need to, I miss talking to Miss Diana Wright. I'm going to have to get a hold of her. I do miss talking to her. She's been busy on this Edita Sitar winter scenes, winter village, I think. But that is just beautiful. And then 
this quilting. I think I've shown you this before, but it's worth repeating. Look at the quilting on that beautiful, beautiful snowflake quilt. Okay, let me go to the next one. Here is just a few of her houses when she started. And they're doing, I think, a large version and miniature version. So that's wonderful. And look at this beautiful quilt. She started the center with a star, inside a star, and now put some beautiful borders and cornerstones. And I can't wait to see what comes next. That's beautiful. But I miss, I know Diana visits with her son on Sundays, but I miss our Diana. She's got her wooden iron. Some people call it a finger iron. I love this basket of flowers. She's doing a Civil War reproduction style quilt. And then I love this snowflake. Looks like a table runner. Just beautiful. I'd like to know how she does the snowflake part. Is it a printed fabric or it, is she somehow, here's the finale of that, all quilted and beautiful. Very talented woman. Okay. Beautiful work. If you ever want a quilt made or you need a quilt quilted, Miss Diana Wright is your, is your go-to gal. Very talented. So this is the Civil War era blocks that she's working on. I think, was that it? Yep, that's it for Miss Diana. So I want to get with her and find out how she's doing. And then we've got the Miss Jamie pictures. Jamie and Crystal, they are the dynamic duo of crafting. So here we go with Miss Jamie and Crystal's photos. Look at that. Isn't that the sweetest? She's now old enough to help put things in delicate glass hurricanes. It is so much fun. I know Miss Jamie just loves that little girl. And I think that little girl loves her mama. Look at all this fun stuff they do. If I ever come back, I'm hoping Jamie will be my mama. Isn't this great? Look at this. Oh, I love it. And Crystal made those wonderful glitter hearts. Okay, is that the last one? Yep, that's the last one there. All right. Miss Jody. Oh, her Frankie just moves me like you do not know. This thing is so, so beautiful. I think she's doing this for her husband. And it is just, her work is absolutely amazing. She can take polka dot fabrics and batik looking fabrics and turn them in to the most beautiful portrait. Look at this thing coming along. Look at this. And this is the most recent photo I have of it. And you know, you can feel you can feel his sadness and his angst and his feeling of not belonging. It is so palpable. And that is with using all different kinds and patterns of fabric. Look at the emotion that comes out of that. Isn't that amazing? To me, that's just as powerful as looking at an actual photograph of the actor at that with the makeup on. It, it, it's it's amazing how moving that is. Way to go, Miss Jody. We've got to get her to enter some shows. She has such talent. All right, now let's see. We'll go to Linda. Linda McCollum is so busy, and I love it. She just is constantly thinking of new things. I love her different fabrics. I love she went out and got a twig. To put in this look at her french knots her french knots are prettier than mine and uh that doesn't surprise me one bit but she's trying to give a different look to her special works of art different textures so that they become very interesting to look at and you really enjoy them 
I love some of her big stitches. That's just really, really wonderful. And she's enjoying using her scraps. And this is a painting on fabric she did. I would love to know how in the world she did that. That is absolutely beautiful. I think she called it fracture. Isn't that beautiful? And here is the landscape she's working on right now. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Way to go. I can't wait to see this continue. Just beautiful, Miss Linda. Ah, look at this. Look at this by the sea. That does remind me of a busy ocean, the wind blowing, and the seagulls flying. Just beautiful. Okay, I think that might be it there for Miss Linda. Okay, now where are we going? Miss Marsha. Miss Marsha had some snow out there in Nebraska. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. That's when it really feels good to stay inside, stay warm. But look at the, you enjoy the beautiful view. Way to go, Miss Marsha. Thank you for sending a photo for us. Okay, then Miss Michelle. Okay, I've shown these. Let me show these last two. I love this. And I loved how she did the stripes of different fabrics to make the threads look like they're colorful and variegated. Beautiful, beautiful. Ooh, I bet you this is one of her brother's paintings. Her brother was an artist. And that is gorgeous. I bet you that's one of his paintings. Uh, Rhode Island is a very pretty state and gives you a lot of inspiration. Here is her Heart at Home COVID quilt. I love how she made the houses for the four co cornerstones. Way to go. Way to go, Miss Michelle. Okay, now let's see where we're going. That was Miss Michelle. Here we go, Miss Nadine. Okay, if you're bothered by something, you might not want to look at this, but this is the tip of the finger. Well, this is the finger after the tip. The corner, tip corner was cut off with her rotary cutter. So please, ladies, remember that these things are dangerous tools. And always wear shoes in case you drop it. Um, if you, you might want to consider wearing a protective glove on the hand that holds the ruler. And just be careful, ladies. She and I are good examples of, doesn't matter how long you've been sewing, you're going to hurt yourself at some point. This is not a hobby for the faint of heart, is it? Winter Village, Edita Sitar. That's her pattern. Beautiful. Look at these snow. She was so tickled. She finally got her snow. And I love it. It's that wet snow that sticks to everything and makes it look like fairyland. Isn't that, isn't that just beautiful? That is just, that looks like a crystal cathedral. That is beautiful. Look at that snow stuck and snow and ice stuck to the branches with the sun shining on it. So thank you so much, Miss Nadine, for sharing these pictures with us. How beautiful. All right, let's see where we're going now. I know we've got a couple more. Um, our new Susan Smith, let me see. Yes, yeah, she did send us a, a different... Well, at least I remember the other ones that looked all alike, and they were fascinating. And now this is absolutely colorful and beautiful. So way to go. All right. Now, Patricia Fry. Let's see what that lady's been up to. She had two UFOs, two things she had done recently. That is so cute, giraffe and monkeys. Look at this lovely... Lovely Valentine's Day table runner. And this was so cute that I had to save it and show it. She, she and Cheryl Lemon have been keeping us in stitches lately. Ha, huh, I did a pun. Oh, so thank you, Miss Pat. That was so cute. All right. Of her other stuff, but I just love these bright 
happy quilts. So I wanted to share those one more time with you. Just beautiful for twins. So now let's go back to here. And I think our last, oh, our next to the last is Miss Susan Smith, who has been creating like you would not believe. My goodness, this woman, her sewing machine needs a break. <laughs> it's smoking. <laughs> I love her nine patches. Sometimes those, those simple patches are the most thing and fun. And she made storyboards for her quilt blocks that she was going to make. And a storyboard is just what block are you going to make and what fabrics are you choosing to make it out of. And that can really help you um, lay out a quilt and keep it organized because that's the important part. Here's another storyboard, and I love it. She's got the pattern, the picture of it, and then the fabric she wants to use instead. Because trust me, you think you'll remember how you're going to do it? You will forget. Look at this cutie pie owl quilt. I love this thing. Look at those owls. Isn't that cute? And I'm assuming she did fusible applique and she is going to stitch it down, do her machine applique to stitch it down. That is so cute. Wonderful. And here is another storyboard. So it's the same. It looks pretty similar to the block we saw before, but... Is this, is this a different one, different colors, or did I, I might have saved it twice. So, oh, here's another one. I don't think we've done this yet. And then she has been busy on her Le Fleur quilt. So she's got those background blocks made waiting for that applique. I love this storyboard. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, some of these, what, what, no, oh, that's right. These are the blocks, pardon me, these are the blocks that were made with the fabrics that she had on the storyboard. That's wonderful. Oh, I love how it came out. That's really great. I love your choice of fabrics. This must be the farmer's wife block she's working on. Just beautiful, Susan. Very, very nice. I thought I was seeing double, but it was the blocks that she had made from the storyboards. All right. The one last thing we have is an artist who reached out to me after one of my landscape quilts. She is a mixed media and paper fiber artist, and she has shows. She sells her work. Very, very talented lady. I love how she has these threads coming through. And she's got a beautiful wax seal holding them in place. I love the scraps of different, from different books, pages. I mean, just look at all of this. The layers, the texture. I've asked her if she would do a video Kind of describing her work and how she does it. She's really busy right now. She has five quilts to be ready for a show. But I'm hoping it once she gets that done, maybe we can, I will even be happy to edit the video for her if she can make it. But look at this. Isn't that beautiful? It is so similar to art quilting. And I think some of the techniques, some of the ideas, some of the methods are going to be very similar, if not the same. So I think we can share a lot with her, but she can teach us so much. So I love her work. I need to email her. I will make sure I email her. Now, I'm going to go. Hold on one second, please. Oops. Sorry if I'm making too much noise. Um, let me try to get this back here. All right. Um, I'm going to go to her website. I want to show you her website. 
All right, I'll close this down. Oops, let's see if I can find it. Oh, look at, oh, I found a really cool page. Okay. This art by, whoops, come on, Deb, calm down. Look at this art by Vinalda. And here is, she has a Facebook page. Oh my gosh, she does so much. Look at all of this. Look at all of this. Whoops. Oh, uh oh. Okay, let me see if I can find her again. Um, give me a moment and I will find. I love seeing other people's works. Let me just check. Okay. All right, I can bring up her Facebook page. Here we go. Here we go. She asked that I share, and I'm happy to. It's facebook.com forward slash art by Vinalda. Look at her beautiful, beautiful work. And if you get in touch with her, please let her know. Or if you sign into her site, tell her where you saw it. Because I'm just very honored that she would let me show you her artwork. So she's a professional, talented artist. Let me see. Okay. Oh, look at that. So that's a paper screen. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Oh, look. She does all kinds of... I wonder if she does, if this is kind of encaustic work, which just means you use a heavy amount of texture and color. Beautiful, beautiful. She's a very talented artist. I love what she what she can do with her different paints and papers and stamps and textures. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So now let me go back. Let me go back some more. Whoops. I think I can go up here. And here she is, Miss Vinalda Utterback. And very talented woman. Very talented. So this must be a show of her work. Isn't that great? All right. So anyway, I just thought I would share this with you. And, oh, Kathleen Ziegler already liked it. Kathleen, thank you, darling. Thank you. I like people getting attention for the work and the talent they have. And it's a small group, but you know what? If I can introduce her to y'all, then that, I'm happy. I'm very happy with that. Okay. Now, let me come back. Everything okay? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, let's go. We're all done with the photos I wanted to show you. Let's see, what would it be like to enter a quilt show? So, I'm going to bring this up, bring this over, and let's, I'm going to go to type in mid, whoops, pick, hard to type upside down, quilt, Okay, I want to go to the quilt. So face first. Let's. Oh, here we go. All right. So here it brings up the page. Okay. 
And Mancuso is the show company who puts on the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show every year. And then, so it's how you see it over here. You can contact them. But you click on Upcoming Show Events. It drops down a tab. And you do Online Quilt Festival. Because right now, Mid-Atlantic is the only one that they know for sure is going to be an online quilt festival. So here is the page. February 24th through 27th, 2021. Then you come down here. And what I did is I clicked on, you can click on workshops and lectures. Here is attend the show. What this means is they have a, um, a suggested amount of second. You would hit that. And then it would bring you to another page where you hit it. Any kind of quilt you could possibly want to learn about. This woman does leather quilting and leather. It's beautiful work she does. So what you do, okay, now I'll click on the teacher that I'm taking from. And I'll bring up, tell you a little bit about her what her background is, where she's from, and her work has been exhibited nationally and on Quilting Arts TV. And so here are the classes she's given. Luckily, I signed up for this one because now it's closed. So that means so many people signed up for it. Whoop, they, they have a cap they put it at. So if you click on here, you. Now it comes in other patterns. So it comes in this one. Whoops, let me get off the blue so you can see it. That, that one. And so I'm not sure when I choose, but she tells you what you have to provide. Okay. Variety of fabrics, two complementary colors, at least small piece, six by nine or smaller. Then some black fabric, then a half yard of pylon, okay, or similar interfacing, small sharp scissors to us before the start of the class. And so it's just that easy. Find a class you want, and they have a lecture. This time they've just got one lecture, and you could pay $20 to be able to view that one. Um, but most times they'll have quite a big choice, uh, maybe at least three lectures. So let me go back one more time. Whoops. I want to go back to workshops.